Gamers, a new format is coming to Master Duel. Everyone knows it's about to go crazy. Tier limits are definitely gonna be the best deck. However, as I said in my last video, I don't think tier limit is gonna be tier zero in Master Duel. Uh, it's a best of one format for one, so I don't really think a deck can really be tier zero in a best of one format. There's always upsets and stuff like that. You can play a lot of more targeted hate and uh, just kind of get goofy free wins oftentimes from it. And uh, people can't really prepare for the kind of deck you're playing. So, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of factors that are gonna make it so tier is not gonna be tier zero, but I still think tier limit is gonna be by far the best deck. Because of that, a lot of the best hand traps and staples in the game are going to shift and everyone's gonna be wanting to run cards that hate on the graveyard. So today I wanted to make a video and normally I do hand trap tier lists, but I think it'd be better for these videos to start doing both staples and hand traps. I think it gives a better understanding of the meta in general. And I do think there's a lot to say about cards other than hand traps in a format like this. This video is not just gonna be about tier, it's just gonna mostly revolve around tier because obviously tier limits will be the best deck. So for our first one here, a lot of people are wanting to run Dimensional Fissure. Now, in my opinion, best of one format, Dimensional Fissure is a card that is really only going to be good going first. So I don't know. I don't really think cards like that are going to be that good. It's still not bad, obviously. If you activate this, it does have a lot of control over the game. I didn't put Macro Cosmos on this list, but Macro Cosmos as well as Dimensional Fissure, pretty much in the same boat. I think they're decent cards. You know, if you're going first, you set it up, you activate it, and you know, they kind of are forced to deal with it. So if you set this up with a couple of other interruptions, you should be doing pretty nice. Red Reboot, they set up a lot of really good traps in tier limits. They have their uh, like counter trap that's really, really solid. They also have Solik, which uh, Solik, you know, is like a monster negate. It's a really good trap card. So I would definitely say uh, it's at least decent. Uh, I don't know if I would really want to say very good or amazing. You know, they're still going to have everything else available to them. And it's not like they don't, won't set up other interruptions. But, you know, it's I don't think I can really say it's bad. Like if you if you run the red reboot, it might be good. And it might also be something you like to have around just because you might get surprised by some people that are trying to sneak in some funky wins with some trap decks. People are going to be running a lot of graveyard hate. So decks that don't care a lot about their graveyard are probably going to be doing a little bit better in this format just because because like you're targeting your hate towards tier limit and they're just like oh so all these hate cards that you're running in your deck meant to deal with tier limit don't do anything to me so i'm gonna play this goofy trap deck exo sisters is a great example exo sister is probably gonna get more popular so you know if you surprise the exo sister player with a red reboot that's really amazing right uh so that's why i would say it's still decent it's definitely not bad now if we're talking about bad here um to me an obvious one is like cards like uh the Chaos Summoner and Lancia. I mean, I don't even know. These aren't really in the discussion, but like these Banish Stoppers will not really do much of anything in the upcoming format. Uh, so I, I definitely would not be running these. I know they're good against like Runic stuff and they're good against Laundries, which like if you face those, like, you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, these cards were already phased out by now. No one's really running these anymore. And uh, for good reason, in my opinion. So I'm going to put them in bad. Uh, another card that is honestly kind of bad i don't even we could put it like at the bottom of decent i'll just put it in bad because it makes more striking of a statement uh people keep talking i'm wrong you're wrong about nibiru you're wrong about nibiru bro if they just like make a kaleido heart before you go nibiru you're just like extending their plays by going nibiru kaleido heart loves nibiru so i would say like in a tier format nibiru is not that good not to mention there might be still people playing sprite like obviously sprite is not going to be the best deck anymore but it's not going to be completely phased out either it's still going to be a solid strategy and uh, obviously sprite doesn't care about nibiru either they can just make gigantic and turn off your nibiru i think nibiru is just kind of bad honestly um another card here that i think is just decent uh i, I don't even know if i want to say decent i probably want to put this in bad actually shadow imprisoning mirror obviously if you go first and you go shadow imprisoning mirror against tier you're probably winning the game so it might be unfair to put it here maybe i'll put it in decent anyway it's just it's a it, like macrocosmos like dimensional fissures the kind of thing like you got to set it up turn one for it to be good if you're going second and you have this card in your hand you're looking like a pretty much like an idiot especially since like at least dimensional fissure you can activate it on your turn and it is still somewhat useful if they don't negate or pop it uh, if you can actually resolve Dimensional Fissure going second on your own turn, it still does kind of make it hard for your opponent to play. Uh, you know, they have a lot of things that they can do during your turn that they won't be able to do anymore if you're able to, to actually land this card and for it to not like get negated or removed, which the odds are not super high, but a lot higher than like a trap card, which you literally have to set and wait to turn four if you're going second and you draw this. So 
mm, kind of inclined. Actually, I'm just going to put it in, but I don't think this is going to be very good. Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, it's just bad. I mean, I wouldn't play it. <laughs> if you want to play it, go for it. I would just say it's bad. Uh, another card that I think is decent and almost very good, but I'm going to put it in decent because it's in a similar place to Dimensional Fissure, is a uh, Necro Valley. Necro Valley, honestly, it just kind of shuts down what tiers do. Their most important effects all activate in the grave. Uh, if you go Necro Valley, you're most likely winning the game if it sticks around, of course. Like, tier limits have ways of getting rid of these spell cards, so that's why I can't put cards like this much higher than decent. Even though they're game winning, it's not like they don't have options. They have a spell to pop it they have the field spell that pops it there's definitely ways for tier limits to just like pop these and then keep playing so these are not enough to be tier but if they stick around and you have enough interruption to like keep them on the field they are going to be game winning cards against tier limits so necro valley dimensional fissure definitely amazing cards in the matchup now next up here in decent to bad i would say we have gamma uh i might put gamma at the bottom of decent but honestly i'm like super inclined to put it in bad uh gamma is not that great right if they go haveness on your turn they can't go haveness until you have a monster on the field which by then you can't activate your gamma also uh it doesn't really do much for you because like let's say you want to negate merly well you, ne you negate merly then you pop it then merly triggers in the grave and gets to like like still fusion summon so i don't know I, I really don't think gamma is going to be doing very good in this format i wouldn't run it personally i don't think it's a very good idea next up here uh any other oh yeah soul drain soul drain is uh i wouldn't say it's bad i'd say it's a uh, it's probably decent just because it's so impactful it's still a trap card though so similar to shadow imprisoning mirror the one thing about it though is like soul drain has a bit more applicability to other matchups because it just completely shuts off effects in the graveyard and in the banish pile so i would say soul drain uh, probably not better than gamma though probably like at the bottom of decent almost bad because it's like a trap so you have to go first to actually like use it to be tier really solid card just obviously if you're going first it's good if you're going second it's like a dead card in hand pretty much so that's why i don't want to put it too high here uh next up a bad card uh droll and lockbird is a dead card literally just did absolutely don't play droll and lockbird in this format that would be insane it is not good you don't want to play droll and lockbird it's not going to do anything to tier limits so like there's really no reason to even ash is not doing that good in this format but droll and lock is just crazy so what are you going to do you go droll after they go field spell they make it Kalos instead of adding they send to grave use the grave effect like you know what i mean like their play is just like they'll they'll just snowball they, they really don't need to search that much to play yeah effect veiler effect veiler i think is just decent uh uh, I think in this format, you definitely would much rather have uh, Infinite Impermanence, which uh, we're just going to say right now is pretty much S tier. It is amazing. Uh, in Infinite Impermanence is absolutely amazing. Obviously, tier limit players can kind of extend some time. It depends on their hand. But in certain scenarios, you will win the game off of just Infinite Impermanence. It's going to be one of the better hand traps to be playing in the format. By the way, the reason for this is really just because, like, Called By. Called By is going to be everywhere. Everyone's going to be playing Called By. So, you know, you can't you can't Called By an Imperm, but you can surely Called By an Effect Veiler. So, I would definitely say Effect Veiler is not in the best of spots. Some decks might rather run it just because of the, like, level 1 tuner or Spellcaster or whatever. Uh, that's up to you. But, honestly, I just don't think it's nearly as good as Imperm in this format. So, I'm going to put it like a high decent. It's not like an awful card or anything, but it does the job of Imperm less well than Imperm, I would say. A card here that I also think is going to be S tier is DD Crow. DD Crow is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, DD Crow, I think personally, is going to be the best hand trap against tier limit. Uh, some people might say it's Ghost Bell. Some people might say it's Call Meister, which will show up on the list. But in my personal opinion, I think we have this bird here coming out of the dimensional fissure, and it is absolutely the best one because it's going to interrupt the tier limit plays. Obviously, you can just banish the monster that they're triggering for the fusion, and because it gets banished, they don't get to fusion with it. And then it's not like they can respond with a shuffler. If they have a shuffler in uh, the shuffler could shuffle back the material so it doesn't get banished but that also means they won't get to fusion with it so dd crow is going to be amazing at interrupting tier plays i think you're going to run three of this i actually think this card might be worth replacing max c4 i know that's a lot, little bit crazy but uh, let's get to a tier a little bit since we're talking about it um i'm almost inclined to put maxi at the top of a tier limit is going to be absolutely just super super popular like against tier limit activating maxi is kind of like you're just slowing them down 
it's not bad. Maybe maybe we put it at the bottom of S tier because it's still Maxi. And if you're in another matchup, Maxi is game winning. And Maxi can be game winning even against tier. Like, don't get me wrong. It can literally, it usually will end their turn, which is a great effect, actually. The thing is, though, you go Maxi, they can just pass turn and play on your turn if they have Havness. Like, they can just go Havness and just activate their stuff on your turn and make a bunch of fusion summons, summon Winda, and just win the game on your turn. So, Maxi is kind of a double-edged sword. I still think it's very, very good. I don't really think, realistically, I can put Maxi outside of S tier, but I definitely don't think I'm going to run it over DD Crow. I think... I'm probably going to be running DD Crow. I, I, yeah, like it's Maxi. It's still like the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. So don't feel super comfortable putting Maxi uh, any lower than S, even though I don't think it's going to be that great in the upcoming format uh, if everyone's playing tier like we're expecting. Uh, while we're talking about Maxi here, since I don't think Maxi is going to be as popular, I think Ash might also not be S tier in this format. The thing is, Ash doesn't do very much against tier limit. It doesn't really interrupt their plays enough. They have a lot of ways to just keep playing. Like, there's not a really good spot that you can ash where you're like, oh, this is definitely the spot where I ash and it's going to win me the game, you know? And since you're going to be seeing less maxi, which is usually the reason you want to run ash, uh, it's, it's a little, it's a little iffy. It's still one of the best cards in the game. So I definitely can't put it any lower than like the top of A tier. But uh, I think the Ash and Maxi relationship is going to be really weird in the upcoming format. A lot of people might run Ash just in case that they get Maxied if they're not playing tier. So it's going to be a little weird. It's going to be a little scuffed. I'm not a fan of that dynamic, honestly. I, I really wish Maxi would be banned because I do think it's kind of goofy that the main reason people might still run Ash is because Maxi might get activated. It's, it's just kind of goofy. But yeah, this card is not that great against tier limit in general. Uh, from my experience, I was practicing a bit. Shout out Cali Effect for helping me learn the deck a little bit by the way uh, oh yeah while we're here uh i forget what this card's name is but it's basically just worst veiler so yeah we're just gonna put it actually i don't even want to put it here like i think it's worse than necro valley and dimensional fissure uh probably like put it like uh yeah like above gamma i think that makes sense it's it's like above gamma uh this is basically you have to target a special summon monster to negate it and uh it's once per turn unlike veiler and also it's uh just not a good card <laughs> so this will not really interrupt your opponent's plays in the way you want it to i just don't see anyone playing this but it's not a terrible card i think it's moonlit chill or whatever yeah anyway it's a good it's a good card it's not bad it's indecent we can also put dark law uh, i think dark law i would even like Honestly, Valor is just not going to do that much, man. I kind of want to put it even lower. Yeah, let's put it like, let's put it under Red Reboot. I think Red Reboot is better than Valor. Oh, I should put Dark Law lower, actually. Dark Law might be like at the bottom of Decent. Dark Law is especially good against Tier Limit in the sense that its effect is completely busted. The main issue with Dark Law is it's just a free material for their Super Poly and Super Poly is going to three. I think Tier Limit will be running three Super Poly. They don't draw Super Poly, of course. Like this could win the game for sure. But like completely relying on Dark Law is going to be a little rough, especially because of that. Uh, it's still a really good card and it is game winning against tier if they can't out it. Uh, but they have a lot of ways to out it. So we'll see about that. But yeah, I would say it's decent because it is game winning. It's just like screaming, please use me as material. Um, next up here, let's do uh, Ghost Ogre. I think Ghost Ogre will not be that good in the upcoming format. The main thing you might want to do with it is like take out the field spell when they use the pop effect of the field spell. I want to apologize in my last video i was saying that you could actually use the pop effect of ghost ogre to stop the search of the field spell but that was my misunderstanding of how the card worked so yeah because it can't really stop the search of the field spell and only really like stops it when they start popping with it i don't think ghost ogre is going to be very good especially since you don't really want to pop any of the uh, tier limit monsters because then they'll just get their graveyard effects so i would say definitely ghost ogre is not in a very good spot i would even go as far as to say that it's not even decent it's just bad honestly it's just bad it's better than these cards but i don't think it's good at all um let me know if i'm wrong in the comments and i'm missing like a important detail that makes it a lot better than i think but yeah i would say it's just not great um now in very good we could put skull meister uh low-key like i might even put skull meister above ash just for this particular format here uh skull meister is like pretty similar to dd crow except instead of banishing the material it negates an effect activated in the grave so i in some cases, people might rather have Skull Meister. Some people were arguing about that in my Discord. I think definitely DD Crow is better, but Skull Meister is really good too. The main issue with Skull Meister is you can like chain block the effect that you want to resolve. So that like, like let's say they go like Merly Chainlink 1, Agito Chainlink 2, 
well then your your card can only negate Aikido, right? You can't negate the Merly effect, which is what you really wanted to negate. So just going like uh, DD Crow banishing the Merly is a lot better in that scenario than going Skullmeister and negate Aikido, even if like both are good. So I would say definitely like Skullmeister is still a great card and it's not once per turn, which is amazing. It's also kind of a beater. It's kind of a beefy 1800 attack or something. So uh, not a bad card at all. I don't think it's bad. I, I, I think it's going to be very good in the format. So a uh, very respectable pick if you want to play this in your deck but uh yeah i would say it's just like really high very good a tier card for uh, the upcoming format let's do ghost bell ghost bell in this format is good um because it stops called by but it's also it's a once per turn card right so it's kind of a weird one kind of a weird one you almost might rather play this in tiers than against tiers so it's still a great card. I think I would put it in A tier right under Ash. It's still a very, very solid card going first or second, has a lot of applicabilities in the format, and you can use it to stop tier plays. Like it's not uh, impossible to stop tier plays with it. So I wouldn't say it's a bad card by any means. It's very, very solid. But uh, also I think these cards are a little bit better for the upcoming format in general. Um, next up here, let's do D Shifter. Dimensional Shifter, I think is absolutely S tier. Obviously not every deck can run this, but yeah, I would even say it's like better than DD Crow. Uh, if you can run it, it's probably the best hand trap in the game for the upcoming format. With tier limits going around, you activate D Shifter. They can't play on their turn. And unlike Max C, where you go Max C and it just ends their turn, but then they just play on yours. When you go D Shifter, it ends their turn and they can't play on yours because it lasts for two turns. So uh, yeah, going second with D Shifter in hand is usually gonna be pretty much a free W. That's why I think decks like Crystal Beasts, decks like uh, Exo Sisters that don't care as much about their graveyard and can run D Shifter are gonna perform very well in the upcoming format. Obviously not as well as the best deck, which is gonna be Tier Limits, but uh, I do think they'll get a lot of free wins from the fact that they can just run the best Tier Limit hate in the game. So yeah, D Shifter, Best hand trap in the game, I think, for the upcoming format. Uh, Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries, I think, is going to be quite good. Uh, just looking at it, like, in the mirror match, it's going to be, like, a game-winning card. Because, like, most tier mirrors will have a pretty similar extra deck. Not exactly the same cards, but usually enough overlap that if you're playing against a tier player and you have, like, Ghost Reaper in hand, you can literally just go Ghost Reaper. They usually only run one of each of the uh, tier limit fusions. You can get rid of their Kit Kalos, and you don't lose your Kit Kalos. <laughs> you get to keep your Kit Kalos. You, still, you can still use your Kit Kalos. It's definitely going to be in a pretty good spot. I definitely don't think it's going to be a bad card at all. I think it's an A tier card for sure if you want to run it. Not a lot of people run this card in Master Duel for understandable reasons, but in a format like this that's going to be probably a lot more focused and a lot less diversified like the last one was, uh, I would say, yeah, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries might actually become quite the good card. Next up in S tier, we can put this. Oh yeah, this is definitely S tier. Super Polymerization is going to be like the best going second card in the game. I'm going to put it like above DD Crow as well. Uh, super polymerization with like some good fusion targets. There's a lot of good super poly targets to get rid of tier boards. Obviously, tier players are probably going to play three. I think most decks should play three super poly and uh, you can kind of hard go second. Uh, get rid of like the main stuff on their board that you want to deal with. The thing is, it's not going to be like a game winning card to go super poly because usually they can set up so much. Like normally they can set up like a rule Kalos, a Baron the Fleur, a Kaleido Heart, an Elf. Like they can set up so much and that's like there's so many different boards that they can make in tier limits. So and they also have like good back row that they can search. They have so many plays. Uh, so it's definitely not going to be like an end all be all card that's just going to win you every game. But super poly with some good super poly targets is going to be a amazing especially once we get garuda i don't know when we'll get it in the game i don't think it's in the upcoming set so super poly is not gonna be as good i'm just gonna put the super poly targets in like very good so you know you have your starving venom dragon your dragostapelia and uh, this is a weird one, but Entis, I think, is also going to be a very good target. The thing about Entis is you can actually send it to the graveyard with your Diviner if you need to pop a back row. So if there's a certain back row that's giving you trouble, you can just do this, and that's going to help you tremendously. For example, if your opponent has Necro Valley up on the field, you could go normal Diviner, Diviner effect, send Entis, pop the Necro Valley. So I think for tier players, this card is going to be really, really solid. Um, and if you're a non-tier player, there's also good applicabilities for it, because uh, this card 
can use a Synchro as well as an Xyz monster. And oftentimes you might see tier limit players pass on Abyss Dweller plus Baron de Fleur, or oftentimes they'll also pass on Redoer Baron. So if they pass on Redoer Baron or Abyss Dweller Baron, you can use this card as a super poly target that uses a Synchro and an Xyz monster. It's not gonna happen often, but when it does, you're gonna be glad because getting rid of that Baron negate is gonna help you tremendously at cracking that board. They can set up Baron pretty damn consistently thanks to Diviner plus Snow. Uh, a card I forgot to mention here, uh, actually it's two cards, but yeah, these cards are absolutely must plays in the upcoming format. I would say like right next to DD Crow, any deck that can run them, you have to run the Shufflers. The Shufflers are way too good because they're gonna mill your deck when they wanna use their Agito, when they wanna use their Kelbeck, they're gonna mill their deck and your deck. And if they get your Shuffler in the grave, your Shuffler can stop their fusion, obviously, by banishing itself from your grave and returning their materials to the deck. So, you know, if they wanna go like Merly effect in the grave, or they could even like do a chain link, right? They could go like a Merly Sharon effect in the grave to fusion summon off of a mill on a Gito, and you can actually chain your Mudora or your Keldo and just shuffle their stuff back. So this counts for Mudora and Keldo. These cards are must plays. I don't know which ratios you wanna play, you know, just adjust it for your deck list. But honestly, the more the better, cause you want them to mill these so that you can actually like regain control of the game a little bit by stopping their fusion summons. So yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend playing these cards. Next up here, let's do the Kaijus. I think the Kaijus are also gonna be very good. I'm gonna put them like above the super poly targets just because, by the way, I don't actually mean Kaijus. I mean uh, sphere mode and lava golem. I think just a single kaiju isn't really gonna do enough to crack the board. One of the best things about Sphere Mode and Lava Golem in the upcoming format is when you tribute tier limit monsters to summon these cards, they are not sent to the grave by card effect. It is just a summoning condition to tribute them, so they will not trigger in the grave. Normally, you know, tier limit monsters trigger in the grave when they're sent to grave by card effect. So this is a great way to deal with them. So definitely, I think if you can afford to, playing Sphere Mode and Lava Golem could be really, really good in your deck. Uh, next up here, let's do, uh, this is like a no brainer this is going to be a, a, me a meta staple for sure it's an extra deck monster uh, abyss dweller abyss dweller is going to be absolutely incredible we're going to put it in s tier abyss dweller is going to be in every list if you're not running abyss dweller uh, you're a chump you, you gotta run Abyss Dweller. You, you have to. It's just too good. Uh, another S tier card for the upcoming format, I would say, is uh, Triple Tactics Talent. Havnus can play on your turn. They can do a lot of stuff on your turn. Triple Tactics Talent is a card that I think is gonna be a lot better than Max C. Uh, it's just a card that's gonna help you regain advantage a lot in the game. And it just kind of help you like keep up with the pace while they're doing their tournament stuff on your turn. You can go Triple Tactics Talent and, you know, get a bit of advantage off of what they're doing. Or you can look at their hand and discard something that's probably not the best you probably just want to draw two off of this to be honest which is still like really good or you might steal one of their monsters if they like set up a window on your turn because they absolutely can even if you're going first set up a window on turn one so yeah you know stealing the window wouldn't be too bad uh next up here we have evenly matched evenly matched i think is in a pretty good spot i don't know if it's really like up here because they can just set up a baron but overall, other than Baron, they don't set up like very good spell and trap negates. They do have that Omni negate trap though. So they do have a couple ways to stop evenly matched. I would say it's quite good still. Uh, probably, probably like at the top of decent. Yeah, I'm gonna put evenly match at the top of decent. I might be wrong about this one. It might be a little bit better than I think. Um, same for Dark Ruler No More. I think it's gonna be a high decent. The thing about Dark Ruler No More is you can't damage them and whatever you're gonna be doing to crack their board, you're gonna have to set up a lot of interruptions to stop them from playing the turn after. So Dark Ruler No More is a little weird. Also, they can set up a lot of really good trap interruptions and stuff like that. So like Dark Ruler won't do all of the work for you and Maxi exists. I've been experiencing this a lot lately where I kind of miss playing Droplet because Dark Ruler No More, you activate it and then they go Maxi on your turn and suddenly you can't really do anything because if you play, you can't damage them and then it goes back to their turn. It's turn three, they have 20 cards in hand and uh, you're about to lose the game, buddy. So yeah, I don't know. Dark Ruler, a little bit weird for me. Still decent, still a good card. I would put it like a high decent. Okay, and uh, I just realized I forgot to put a card on here that I really wanted to talk about. So we're just gonna talk about it right now and I'll put like a picture on the screen of the card. It's definitely not S tier. I'm talking about Herald of the Arclight. Herald of the Arclight, basically uh, any monster that your opponent would have sent to the grave from the hand or deck is banished 
finished instead. So Herald of the Arclight, I think, is going to be a very, very, very strong going first card against Tier Limit. It's better than Dark Law because it's not like a super easy, super poly target. But it's definitely, I wouldn't say like it's an S tier card or anything just because, you, you know, you can't really rely on it to save the game for you. But Herald of the Arclight is going to be a game winning card, kind of similar to Abyss Dweller. I would probably put Herald of the Arclight in the A tier here, like around, you know, where the Kaijus and removal are. Like that doesn't really matter for the order, but I do want to point out if your deck easily sets up a Herald of the Arclight, that's going to be absolutely incredible for your deck. Another similar card would be Shen Shen. Uh, Shen Shen, on the other hand, uh, banishes any monster that would be sent from the field to the grave so not quite as good as herald of the arc light against ishizu tier but it's still very solid so uh, i would say you know that that one is probably just like a decent like a high decent card uh, but yeah herald of the arc light and shen shen i forgot to put them on this list but definitely try those cards out if you can run them they're very very good anyway that's going to be it for my tier list i hope like i was able to kind of give you a decent idea of what to expect in the format i discussed this thoroughly with my discord today to get a good understanding of what the format might look like so that i can actually not induce you an error and just kind of show you some of the best cards that you can play in the upcoming format it's going to change up the metagame a lot as you can see here the popular staples are really about to just switch you know like it's going to be a massive difference so uh i can't wait to see what it's going to be like it's it's going to be really exciting to see the game change so much and just to see the play styles of everyone just kind of switch around and as you can see here all the best cards pretty much are cards that help you deal with the graveyard so that basically means that if your deck doesn't care about the graveyard you're going to be performing a lot better just because everyone's going to be running hate for graveyard decks so that's kind of nice we'll see what happens thank you so much for checking out the video let me know your thoughts in the comments let me know if you think i'm wrong about certain placements and stuff like that it's not always easy there's a lot of cards on here i usually have a lot less cards on these lists so yeah give me your thoughts thank you for watching the video huge shout out to my uct tier members that would be raptor rapture Boggerman for 20 dad dude joey as well as hit or miss jt jq the king and b-dubs you guys are so appreciated. Thank you so much for the support, seriously. As well as everyone supporting in the baby tier, in the miss tier, and you who's liking, commenting, subscribing, doing all that good shit. Peace.